Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, good to be with you today. We're in verse 13, chapter 1, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel. Um, by the way, as you're turning there, just you might be curious, 1 and 2 Samuel were originally one book until the writing of the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of um, the Hebrew Old Testament, I think in around um, the second century BC. And um, interestingly enough, it was divided after the writing of the Septuagint, uh, but it covers about 150 years of history, specifically dealing with three people. That would be Samuel, Saul, and King David. So we're gonna take a look at all those lives. Man, there's so much to learn. Today we're in verse 13 though, checking out this great story about Hannah, who is one of the greatest figures in scripture. She was a woman of prayer and a woman of her word. The Bible says in verse 13, um, Hannah was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved and her voice was not heard. So, so you remember with me, right? She's gone in, she has the opportunity to um, worship as she's being led by Elkanah. Um, she's in this place where Eli is next to the doorpost of the tabernacle. She is praying. The thing is this, she's praying in her heart. Her lips are moving, but there's no voice. And so Eli's sitting there and look at Eli's, Eli's whole perspective of temple worship was um, very perverted, not because he was doing perverted things, his sons were for sure. And he, like I would say, the biggest sin committed by Eli was his permissiveness. He allowed his sons to run roughshod over the law of God and use the very things of God um, as opportunities to feed their own flesh. And Eli, who was the high priest, should have, should have booted both those boys out of temple worship 100%, and um, he never did that. And it had a major, major impact on, on Israel. So he's watching this and he's like, man, this woman's drunk, right? Because I'm sure he's seen it before. His, his boys are bringing in the girls and you know they're having parties. So he's, he's gonna call her out. But here she is, this, that's really not the whole point of, of this um, consideration of the scripture today. He's watching, she's praying, she's praying in her heart, right? She's praying in her heart, her lips are moving. And the amazing thing that you're gonna see is God hears this prayer, right? God hears this prayer. We, we've talked already yesterday about this prayer that she speaks to God that was so specific and so heartfelt and such an acknowledgement of who God, God was, the Lord of hosts and who she was and, and that just a pleading with God, you know, to be compassionate in her moment of need. And all of this is happening in her heart. And this is the thing, God heard that. God, and th I know, I know today I say this and I'm like, man, this is going to sound so obvious to you today, but someone needs to hear this. Someone needs to hear this. God heard what was going on in this woman's heart. God heard her silent prayer. God, even though she wasn't articulating in profound ways, you know, even, even though there may not have been a sophistication religiously to the words that she was using and specific equations that would have maybe promoted her prayer before the eyes of God, just because she wasn't, you know, praying in a charismatic, highly emotional, um, demonstrative way. I'm saying to you today, sometimes, like we get it all messed up with prayer. Sometimes we're, sometimes we think, Jesus addressed this with his disciples. He's like, don't think that you're hurt because you're many words. You know, don't, don't be like the Gentiles who, who have this attitude that because they're speaking with more words, somehow, somehow they think that, that they're heard. That, that's not the way that it works. It's not the sophistication of your prayer. So people will come to me sometimes and say, hey, pastor, would you pray for me? Because, you know, um, you just, you, your, your prayers are more sophisticated. You're closer to God. And it's like, well, both those, wrong, wrong, wrong. Like, wrong on both those things. You know, wrong on the fact that God, or wrong on the idea that God hears only sophisticated prayers because that's not the case. 
It has nothing to do with your sophistication. Uh, wrong on the idea that somehow because someone may have a, a position um, in serving in a position at church as a leader that somehow they're closer to God. Wrong. Wrong on that one. Wrong on the idea that you have to be charismatic in the way that you present your prayer and that the, the louder. You know how this works sometimes? Sometimes you get someone who's praying quietly and gently and it's just a matter of like, it's just a matter of the heart. Um, and I'm not saying that when someone prays loudly, it's not a matter of the heart, but then somebody else is like hyper charismatic, really loud, yelling in their prayers, um, which is okay to pray that way too. But thinking that somehow God hears that one over the other one totally misunderstands what prayer is all about. Prayer is about the sincerity of your heart before God. Prayer, prayer is what, whether you're speaking it out loud or whether it's in your heart, the fact is this, God hears you. And so the devil is always going to be doing everything he can to discourage you from praying. Hey, you're not sophisticated enough. You're not close enough to God. Um, you're not charismatic enough. You're not yelling loud enough. And the truth is this, if you know Jesus, right? Because, let me say it clearly, your prayers are heard not because of you, but because of him. Your prayers now can go to the very throne of God because they've been sanctified. They've been, they've been sprinkled with the blood of Christ. They're now an offering that's pleasing to God instead of an offense. I'm saying you can pray because Christ is your advocate and you need to root yourself in that today. Would you do that? Would you do that and allow that to encourage you to lean harder into praying to God? Father, thank you that even as we wrap this devotion up and saying thank you that you hear us and, and Father, help us. I pray for everybody, God, everybody. Would you grow us all up in our prayer relationship with you? Help us to take steps forward. God, I want that in my life. And so hear this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.